Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this web webinar this morning. Um, today we'll be talking about mental health revisited and the effects of COVID-19 that's had on mental health within the workplace. I'm bringing to you this webinar from Clover. Um, Clover HR is a very trusted people partners and you'll see here on the screen we have over 25 partners now within, within our team. Um, all with different specialisms in training, recruitment, well-being, rewards and many other people strategies that we like to help our clients with. This is myself, Lynn Berman, I'm one of the HR business partners here and I'll be delivering the presentation today. So if you do want any question, have any questions or anything after today, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. I have over 22 years of HR experience and I'm very passionate about this subject, so I'm more than willing to help you with any queries you may have. Question and answer session is at the end, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A, um, and I will try and get to them at the end. If not, send me a question after today, if it's private or confidential, and I'll try and get, well, I will get back to you as soon as possible. I would ask you to mute your uh, microphones just so I can get through the main drill to the presentation and the webinar, but if you do want to interrupt at any point, please put, put your hand up and I'll try and come to you. So the contents of the presentation and the webinar that I'm going to go through with you today, um, we're going to look at what is mental health again uh, and de define it so we can see what the symptoms are and signs to look out for as an employer um, in your employees. The effects of COVID-19 on mental health, this has had a big impact in the last 12 months, as you, as you know from the press, and we want to see what the effect mental health has had on the workplace, but more importantly, what we can do to help. Um, we need to put, us, put try and do everything we can to help our employees. And I'll be trying to give you some hints and tips in order to do that today. And then we'll put a summary in place so we can go through what we've learned. So when we look at what is mental health, um, it is estimated um, that in one in four people actually experience a mental health issue in any given year. So we really need to be uh, mindful of this. And at least one in six employees are depressed, anxious, or suffering from a stress-related issue at any one time in any given week. So it may be hidden away, certainly within your employees, day-to-day um, -day movements, and um, we need to find ways to find this. So in 2014-15, anxiety, depression, and stress accounted for 35% of all work-related ill health and 43% of all working days lost due to ill health, and that was from the Health and, Sec health and Safety Executive. In 2019, um, there were 5,691 suicides in England and Wales, with three quarters of them being in men. So males aged 45 to 49 have the highest suicide rate, and for females, it's 50 to 54. These rates of suicides amongst um, under 25 is also are increasing, particularly in females. So, some statistics for you here, it is a big problem and it's not going away without our help. There have been reports of mental health services facing high pressures for a number of years. And more recently, the Royal College of Psychology Psychiatrists um, predicts alarming increases in demand for mental health services, so especially crisis care services, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So a survey of 250 of the most senior leaders in the English NHS has shown that 72% of leaders expect a 20% increase in demand against a 10 to 30% reduction in capacity in the coming months. So you'll see mental health influences how we think and feel about ourselves and others and how we interpret our events. In many ways, mental health is just like physical health. Um, everybody has it and we need to take care of it. So there are many types of mental health issues we need to look at. An issue can happen suddenly because of a specific event in someone's life, or it can happen over a gradual amount of time and creep up on individuals without them knowing. Work plays a strong part in mental health and it provides our social contacts and support and it keeps us physically and mentally active, uses our brain, allows us to develop new skills and gives us a social status, a sense of identity and personal achievements and provides a way for us to structure and occupy our own time. So work and non-work-related non -related factors can also cause poor mental health. For example, the pressure of ongoing change at work or longer or more intense hours may be exacerbated by financial pressures, pressures at home. 
So relationship problems and given the aging population, greater care and responsibility that people may have. If the workplace is not supportive, it can trigger or exacerbate mental health, such as anxiety, depression and stress related disorders. So managers can play a key part in this support. As, you, as a manager or a colleague, here are five signs to look out for. So we look at the emotional state of our employees. Are they irrational when asked something? Sensitive to criticism, loss of confidence. Cognitive behaviour, so are they making mistakes easily? Is it poor performance suddenly when they've always been a good performer? Is their behaviour changing? So arriving late for work, no lunch prepared or an official time off that's out of character. Their physical state, they constant cold, being tired all the time, put on weight, lost weight. These are all signs. Within the business, have they got increased absence or are they working longer hours to not go home? These are just some of the signs. Obviously, people can hide them. So these are just some of the immediate signs that you have to look out for. So when we look at the effect of COVID-19 on mental health, there are some issues that have been exacerbated from this. So depression, eating problems, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, bereavement, isolation, loss of income and fear are triggering mental health, um, ish, mental conditions or exacerbating existing ones. Many people may be facing increased levels of alcohol or drug use in order to try and cope with their feelings. So sleep has been a real issue that has come out and insomnia within people and anxiety and panic attacks about the unknown. All these signs of, have occurred and increased, obviously due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Within the work home life separation, a lot of employees have found it difficult to separate work and home life with, it, have, with having both their office at home, possibly their partners at home as well, and also their children who need looking after as well. This has took its toll a lot on employees and the balance has been hard to find for a lot of people. Overload of work, we've all had to ensure that they, those who are unwell need to have the adequate time off to recover. However, with also people, employees in work covering the workload, um, they couldn't experience burnout. Um, they'll also be fearing, experiencing a different type of pressure and need that support. So people at home suffering obviously will need that, a, a different kind of support to those within work. And returning to normality, many are unsure of what normality feels like as it's been so long. So we've had cases of those who have had used to work away, being fearful of leaving the home for so long and being anxious of this. So be mindful that those who, work, who do work away from home, they don't suddenly have any anxieties going back to what they used to do within their job and talk to them about it. Obviously, the furlough scheme has helped a lot of employers and employees over the last few uh, 12 months so employers and employees have had the financial help um, excuse me to deal with this and obviously to hopefully to avoid any redundancy situations so this has left employees fearful of their jobs and if they have to go back to have, have they got a job to go back to and also after a significant period of time off the fear of returning back to the workplace and what that looks like what it feels like in that routine the loss of communication has also affected a lot of people. So hopefully companies and employees have continued to, excuse me, to communicate with their employees during the pandemic. But some have not had any company updates, financial updates, or had regular checks in throughout this. And this has had an effect on the employee's well-being and how they feel coming back into the workplace. So just be mindful of all these things that you need to look out for and the effect it's had on your employees. The effects of mental health at work. So the, the things that have a significant effect when mental health is affecting the workplace, and you can see it quite obviously within the workplace, maybe is increased absenteeism and the reasons for that. Try and have a look at the return to work interviews and see if there's a pattern emerging. The negative impact on productivity and profit. So this could have a significant effect on sales, on the turnover, on the um, profit of the business. Um, how much um, production is getting out the door. Um, so keep an eye on all the figures related to that in your key performance indicators within your management report. Increasing costs to deal with might be an issue. And obviously if the productivity is decreasing, increased costs will lead to an, uh, pressure within the business. 
the impact of morale and the mood within the company. So keep a temperature check on the culture within the organisation, how employees are feeling, how they're interacting. Alcohol and drug dependency. This is always something that employers need to look out for anyway, but have a look at if there's been any increase or significant different signs from their employees. Well, there's a lot of talk about drinking at home. And a decrease in employee engagement. You'll be able to hopefully have regular team meetings with all your employees. So see if there's engagement there. Ask people how they are. Follow up with a one-to-one -one afterwards, just if there's someone who's quiet within a meeting, just to check in on them and see if they're okay. The most important thing to really look at is what employees can do to help. And this is what I want to help you with today. So hold regular one-to-ones with your employees to see how they are. Hold regular calls, Zooms, Teams, or face-to-face -face meetings when you can with your employees so you can keep the working relationship there and talk work-related and non-work-related um, subjects as well to see how the individual is. Look at phased returns back to work if needed, if they've had a long time off on furlough, and if it's for a substantial period, you may want to look at phasing them back on so many days per week just to get them used to that environment and that routine again. So look at flexibility in the future and what has worked well and not well. Throughout this pandemic, a lot of companies have found that actually working from home can be even more productive. So just have a look at what's worked and what hasn't worked and um, review the contracts of employment that you have in place to see if any working practices should and could be changed and whether working from home could be a possibility in the future for some or a combination and a hybrid of working from home and office space. Find out how the employees are feeling about this and try and discuss their mental health. But don't ignore the problem if there are any issues with your employees on mental health or a high level of absence. Enlist the health and support of medical experts, um, HR professionals, occupational health experts or counsellors in order to support the employee's journey back into the workplace. Potentially do an employee survey to find out how employees are feeling, whether this um, and also get their interaction from their concerns and worries coming back into the workplace. This could be anonymous or named, but it gives you a flavour of any common issues amongst your team and help you plan what you can do to help. And obviously they may not feel comfortable coming straight to you, so a survey is a good way of finding out how everyone is thinking and feeling. Introduce a higher level of well-being for employees. Um, a lot of employees are currently stepping up their well-being packages as a benefit and offering a variation. Um, of different schemes to help, such as massages, counselling, chair yoga, socials, free fruit, wellbeing days, birthday days off, free tea and coffee, improved break breakout areas, charity links and CSR responsibilities. All these show you care for your employees and you're looking at their mental and physical wellbeing. Mental health first aiders, um, the health and safety executive have updated their guidance on this and as of 2018, employees need to consider covering mental health first aid training in addition to first aid at work training. So having some mental health first aiders on site in the workplace is a recommendation. It's not legislation as yet, so there is no set date when workplaces must have a sufficient mental health provisions. However, employers need to treat mental health in a similar way to physical health. So employees are encouraged to take steps to consider employees' mental health, provide a safe working environment physically and mentally. So workplaces could undertake a needs assessment and put in place strategies to address any risks and, and needs that are highlighted either through the employee survey or talking to your employees. Help is available for your employees. Um, and I've got a couple of slides here that obviously you can look back on. Um, to see that there is help out there from various sources. There's just a few there on Mind, Panic, OCD UK. We've got Rethink, Mental Illness, Samaritan, Sane. All these can help. Clover HR also liaise and partner with a number of occupational health providers, mental wellbeing specialists and counsellors. So if there is any advice and support you want on this or we can lead you to the right person that you need, by all means, Give us a call and we'll be more than happy to help. So in summary, um, make sure you communicate mental health and make it a topic um, people are able to discuss. So be free and easy about talking about mental health uh, as an employer and make sure you have a door is always open approach for your employees. 
So be aware mental health can take many different forms. Mental health can be work, home, personal, or a mixture of all related topics. So be aware it can appear in different forms for different people, not one size fits all. Look out for different signs and address them straight away. Do not delay if you feel there is an issue. Talk to the person concerned and offer your support as this can only shorten the process for them and obviously help you as well as an employer. And show you care as an employer. Employers who maximise their wellbeing initiatives really show they care about their, their people. And at Clover HR, we are seeing a number of our clients improving their wellbeing strategies and talking to their employees about what would help make it a better place to work. Sorry. Um, so ask the employees how they feel. Do regular catch-ups and don't be afraid to ask the employees for any ideas that they may have. Um, some of the best ideas come from those that do their own, do the jobs. So I think it's important to ask them and get buy-in from them for anything. And remember, everyone has experienced the last 12 months differently. Every single person has experienced a different lockdown due to their homes, their finances, their schooling, the parents, etc. So be aware of this and don't generalise that everyone feels the same. And keep communicating. Keep regular communication about the people, it's business, the business, it's plans, and keep the dialogue going so they feel part of something. For some of our clients, we've been holding mental health sessions for their employees to reassure employees that it's not a taboo subject and the employer cares about them and their mental health and is approachable to any issues they may have. This has been a great way to highlight the issues of mental health within your employees and raise awareness. So if you as an employer would like us to run any mental health sessions for your employees, please don't hesitate to get in touch. This is a good way to communicate the issue with staff without you having to address it sometimes yourself. So it just shows that you've got it on your mind, you're supportive and you want to do something to help them. Thank you ever so much for listening today. I hope it's been helpful for you. The slides will all be on YouTube um, following today. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask now. We are here to help. Okay, so there doesn't look like there's any questions there. So thank you for listening. I will end the webinar now. And um, if you need anything after today, do not hesitate to contact. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.